Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's vlog. So as you would have seen um, in the footage before this clip, I woke up very early yesterday, 4am, um, drove myself to the airport which took about 45 minutes from where I live in Ubud down to the airport in the south of Bali. Um, and then it was, I got a little bit of reading in um, of Time Shelter. Then I hopped on the plane over to Singapore, which is about two and a half hours. Landed in Singapore and I absolutely love Singapore airport because it is just the epitome of efficiency. You're out of the plane and onto the metro. So going through all of that immigration and everything um, in less than 20 minutes. So it is absolutely fantastic in comparison to some airports that I've been through where it's just, just hours and hours of queues and delays. It is just a breeze. So last night I went out to Gardens of the Bay. They do a light show there. I've been to Singapore now, I think three times and each time I've made sure to catch the light show. Um, it is absolutely beautiful. They have the sort of trees made out, made out of metal work and they, they light it up and it's uh, choreographed to music. And I was sat next to an Aussie couple who were seeing it for the first time. And so like, we got chatting before the show started and it was really lovely to see their reaction as well because it is incredibly impressive. And it, when you're seeing it for the first time, it really is a wow moment. And it was lovely to see their reaction as well. Um, as well as we had a good 45 minute chat really before the light show started because you have to kind of get there a little bit early, get your space and everybody, thousands of people turn up at this park every night and lie down on the floor and it is one of the most special things to witness um, and so it's, it's my, one of my favourite things if not my favourite thing to do in Singapore. Yeah. Then my second favourite thing to do is to go and eat at um, La Pau Sat and that is a hawker market so you have lots of kiosks and stands all under one roof and so I will insert some footage now of both um, Lao Passat, what I ate for my dinner and also um, footage from the light show. <laughs> So to get into talking about the books then for this vlog, today I will be talking about Standing Heavy, Time Shelter and The Birthday Party. And I really want to bring in here something that Leila Slamani has mentioned on um, the social media for the Booker Prizes. And that is the fact that in her judging of the prize this year, she really had to alter her perception on what a novel was, the core foundation of what that looks like. Because when you're translating and when you're translating culturally, um, a novel. Different cultures have different ways of expressing themselves in novels and how how Leila Slamani's version of what a novel should be and what my version of a novel should be and how somebody else's uh, from a culture halfway across the world think a novel should be are totally different and so I, I very much resonate with her comment on that because especially with Standing Heavy 
and with Time Shelter and the Birth Party to a lesser extent. The ways of those novels is so, so different to your traditional character-based plot, linear narrative that we kind of expect from, well, that I definitely expect from my reading the majority of the time. And so what we're dealing with here is high, highly literary. It is conceptual. It is philosophical. We're not really following one character. We, we, we don't, we almost don't follow, it's almost characterless. There is no character development really at all. It is very much about the, uh, so Sanding Heavy is very much about a, uh, an author looking at capitalism and consumerism and colonialism uh, through the gaze of um, what it's like to work as a security guard and it's told very much in vignettes which is beautiful I, I mean I really had a great time with the writing but it, I wouldn't say I absolutely loved the book because the, uh, loving a book requires some empathy for me and I feel like that is generated through character development and connecting to someone that you're seeing the world through and so it's the same with Time Shelter. That also is historical, political, and but there is a, a lack of of protagonist. There is there is a man called Galstein or Goldstein, depending. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. And he has opened up this building where each floor represents a different decade, and and we don't hear from him, but we hear from a narrator who is bringing his dad along to this building and is kind of an admirer of Galstein's work and he's involved partially but again we know very little about this person he's not he's not a protagonist in in the traditional sense of the word he is just literally a vehicle to discuss the, the what the content of what the author is trying to get at so I'm just going to read you now um, an extract from Olga Tokarczuk who's one of my favorite authors and she has written some praise for Time Shelter on the blurb and um, she is, is quoted here saying the most exquisite kind of literature on our perception of time and its passing written in a masterful and totally unpredictable style each page comes as a surprise so that you never know where the author is going to take you next I've put it on a special shelf in my library that I reserve for books that can never be fully exhausted books that demand to be revisited every now and then and I feel that is, I echo her sentiments, but knowing that I am not at a stage yet where I can fully appreciate the levels in this. And so it's one that I am glad I own and it will stay on my shelves and I will approach it maybe in my next decade and the decade after that and the decade after that because I am constantly aware that I am actually a very novice young reader who doesn't have a lot of experience under their belt and so my taste now will be very different to my tastes in 10, 20, 30, 40 years time and so um, I am very aware of that and know that when I'm reading these books I can't ever really write a book off totally because just because it's not my cup of tea now it may be my exact cup of tea and this sort of philosophical musings on dementia and end-of-life care may be really poignant and really gripping for me when I get to that stage. So going quickly back to Standing Heavy, I did really like the fact that it was a political satire. I, I don't think I have read a political satire unless we're counting Patricia Lockwood's No One Is Talking About This, which is told in a very similar style in that sort of fragmented vignette style. She did it through um, the medium of Twitter tweets um, and this is doing it through the lens of being undocumented uh, migrant workers, security guards, corrupt African nationalism and social networks, community. It is short and I think that goes in its favour because I think maybe with that style of writing it could become exhausting but actually it was engaging for the short time that I had with it. It was 150 pages and uh, it, it kind of alternates between these vignettes and then more more lengthy chapters um, that maybe go deeper into um, a political thought or idea. So for the rest of my day then I'm going to head to the Singapore Botanic Gardens and so the next footage you will see will be of me 
kind of walking around and showing you what, um, the sites. And I'm also, I've also I'm very excited because I've uh, discovered there is an M&S in Singapore. And as a, a, a British person who has not been in my home country, for about 10 months now, I cannot think of anything better than rooting through the shelves of MNS and finding the things that I haven't had for you know a long time now. You know, chocolate covered biscuits and Percy pigs, and just oh, I can't even imagine what's going to be in there. Rhubarb, I, I just anything that's rhubarb, I just absolutely love. Whether it's hand cream, biscuits, drinks, just anything. <laughs> and so I, I'm really excited to go and have a little wander in there. And if I can contain my excitement and get my, my camera out for uh, an extended amount of time, then I will of course show you the, the M&S shelves. And I will get back to you most probably the next time you will see me will be when I'm back in Bali and I will wrap up my thoughts on the birthday party um, and when I've finished it, time shelter as well. We're gonna keep it low key, keep it softly spoken with no strings tying you to me. I'm happy in your company with no emotion Cause my love deserves to be free I never wanna look at a house in the garden I never wanna lock you down I know you're not mine, it's just my turn But we can still have fun for now Told me you don't really do commitment, trust me Consider your message received When you said you couldn't take us too seriously I must admit I was relieved Cause I never wanna play happy families with you But I like having you around I'm fully aware this is a flash in the pan But we can still have fun for now Don't worry, I get it I meant what I said when I said it, lady I never want to look at a house in the garden I never want to lock you down I know you're not mine, it's just my turn But we can still have fun for now No, I never want to play happy families with you But I like having you around Fully aware this is a flash in the pan But we can still have fun for now Yeah, we can still have fun for now Oh, we can still have fun for now Well, good morning everybody. Welcome back to Avud. I got back in um, about midnight the day before last so I had a day yesterday just kind of resting um, I had an absolutely wonderful trip to Singapore as you can probably tell from the footage just it's just so beautiful and so refreshing to go over there and just soak it up all of the the sights and the kind of uh, urban environment because this is this is not it's a very good mix of um, town here and uh, jungle so Yes, to go to Singapore where everything everything works and everything's clean and nothing's broken and the, the kind of pavements are pristine and um, it's just small things like that and toilets that work and immigration that, that functions like a well-oiled machine and things like that and so um, it's, it's a lovely change to um, just enjoy the efficiency I guess that's been created in that in that city. So I am here, of course, to wrap up um, my thoughts. The first one, I guess, is Time Shelter. And whilst I can't say I enjoyed that reading that book overall, I found it boring and laboured in parts, um, I do see its overall merits. And I know we're a long way out from any sort of winning book at the moment for this prize. Um, I 
I do, I think the winner is announced in April, but I do think this is a contender to win. So if I was going by which book I've enjoyed the most from my prize reading so far, it would be Whale, which I gave five stars. Um, and I'm not planning on reading any more of the long list because it doesn't appeal to me for various different reasons. So out of the six that I've now read, um, Whale is the only one I've given five stars and so for me that is my natural winner of the prize but I realise that it it probably won't I mean right now it's looking at a one in 13 chance of winning it might not even make the shortlist but I kind of think it will um, and so uh, again with Time Shelter um, we don't know it's got a one in 13 chance right now but if it is shortlisted I do have my eye on this in terms of a potential winner of the prize overall this year and I think it has a much better chance than a book like Whale or um, the Fitzcarraldo books um, because it it is talking about um, bigger themes as well as European history and dementia and mental health and um, it, it really does seem like the kind of book that a prize would want to root for and want to award. Yeah, it just has that that sense about it. So now I'm going to talk about the birthday party and this was pretty disappointing because I thought it was going to be a win for me. It's kind of like a slow burn thriller type thing. Um, but the more I read the, the kind of first part of it, the more I realised that I don't think it's a me book. It is incredibly slow. Um, I'll read you a little passage of it in a moment, but um, there is um, a, bookstagram, a bookstagram account I follow, I think called Daryl Sweet, I think his name is. I'll put his name up here. And he said um, in his kind of review of this book that he knew from the first, like, the first pages that this was going to be a hymn book and uh, that he was going to love it. And I think to, to counter that, I read the first couple of pages and knew that I wasn't going to love it um, and it wasn't a me book and so when I didn't have when I read that um, like a week uh, kind of later having having struggled through this book um, uh, I thought yeah I, he, he got the sense immediately and when I read a four or five star book I get the sense immediately that this is a me book and I just was battling with the birthday party and didn't didn't have that feeling and so his so Daryl's uh, review really pushed me to put this book down because um, if you're not if somebody else is like is getting that feeling and you're not that's probably a good indication that the book is not for you so I shall read you a section of it Ida left her father to work and crossed the large square courtyard this well-trodden even downtrodden herb where there are still some stunted grey tufts from an old lawn that hadn't withstood the bad weather or the cow's hooves. The weight of the tractors and the machine tools and cars and above all the lack of upkeep because neither Burgon's father, whose idea it had been and who had sown the lawn before forgetting about it and abandoning it entirely, nor Patrice really cared. No one had ever had the time or the desire, no more the women of the house, who worked on the farm, in the fields or anywhere else, some in the factory or cleaning homes for old people. Then the kids, Patrice's two brothers, the last to be referred to as the kids, with the hint of irony subtly denouncing some real or imagined heedlessness, who wouldn't have thought to lift a finger even if the notion of maintaining the lawn had crossed their mind, which in any case it did not. The courtyard was also too big, the ground hard as rock, packed down, compressed, compacted by generations of people and animals trampling on it. So there's a few things I want to point out there. One, that was one sentence. So if you kind of saw me labouring to breathe at points, that is one sentence. So I, and that really captures the exhaustion that I felt reading this book, because what has been described here is a patch of grass. And if anyone else kind of zoned out during that um, kind of passage reading, that is what the book feels like to me. If you thought that was an absolutely thrilling description of a piece of grass, then you know this is the book for you. But for me, she's talking about tufts of grass. She's done a one sentence that took me what ninety seconds maybe to read that to read that sentence, um, and 
yeah, just it's just not me. And I could go on and read another um, another passage which happens directly after this one, which fortunately is the same length but does have a is broken down into two different sentences, which is nice. Um, but yeah, it's just uh, it's too slow. It's too painful for me to read physically. I mean, I don't read out loud, thank God, so I can like put my own full stops in for this for this writer. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just it's it's not going anywhere fast. And for five hundred and seventy six pages of not going anywhere fast, I think I'll I think I'll happily opt out of this one and save myself the hassle. Um, so. That leaves me to just wrap up this video. So thank you very much for watching this International Booker Prize um, vlog episode two. This will be the final instalment for this International Booker Prize reading season. And so if you haven't seen episode one, feel free to go back and watch that one. But I have thoroughly enjoyed my first dive into reading vlogs. Um, the first one was based um, here in Bali and the second one obviously in Singapore and I absolutely had a wonderful time filming. If you would like to stick around and subscribe to my channel that would be absolutely fantastic because um, I know from my analytics that um, half of you, half of my viewers are not subscribed to my channel so I've been hovering around the 440 subscriber mark for about three weeks now so if you would like to um, subscribe, if you've been watching for a while and haven't yet subscribed or if this is your first video and you would like more I will be following um, other book prizes this year uh, and there will be reading vlogs along the way and so please um, stick around and I shall see you very soon in my next video guys thank you so much for watching bye bye